Hey YouTubers, welcome back to Small Engines Questions and Answers for Friday, June 24th, 2011. So hopefully everybody had a good week and to start with, I'm going to show you guys my little RC trainer plane. A lot of you guys saw the plane in some previous videos, so I thought I'd show it to you. So here it is. It's an older plane. It's a trainer. That's why the wing is so big like that. By being wide like that, it gives you more forgiveness in the air if you make a mistake. It's going to float a lot easier up in the air. So I've always wanted one all my life and I finally got into it a little while ago. A friend of mine had these planes kicking around and he's been into it for quite a while so I traded him some stuff for that. And this plane here is in pretty good shape actually for an older plane. He actually just put another motor in. It's a Super Tiger 45. You can see the 45 model number here. And this engine here is barely used he said. It's probably only got about two hours on it. As you can see here the muffler is nice and shiny. I like the Super Tigers, how their mufflers are big like that. Basically the wing, you just attach it with some elastics that go across both ways. And now I can take the wing off, it's easier for storing it like that. And all the electricals inside here, all the servos. And this engine here is a little two-stroke. And this is a glow plug here, there is no spark plug in there. You just basically heat up the glow plug when you go to start it and then it runs off its own heat. It's kind of like a little diesel engine. And this is the fuel that it runs on. It's a nitro fuel. Here it says 15% nitro, 16% total oil, and there's some kind of caster blend in there. It says premium four cycle, but it works in the two cycle engines as well. Anyways, it's a fun hobby. It does take a lot of time to work on these planes and all that but it's not as expensive as it used to be before. You can start off with an old plane like this one and if you crash it then you don't lose that much money. Also you can buy an RC flight simulator. It's called G5 and it's pretty well the best RC flight simulator to put on your PC. My first question today is a YouTuber is asking me if you have a small engine and the coil is on the outside of the flywheel does that mean that you have no points? The answer to that is no. You may have a coil on the outside of the flywheel but that doesn't mean that you have no points under the flywheel. If you have a wire that goes from the ignition module or the coil underneath the flywheel, then that means there is points under that flywheel. So to give you an example, here's a lawnmower motor that's apart. Here's the coil or the ignition module. And if you look around the coil, there is no wire that goes directly under the flywheel. So that means there is no points under that flywheel or on that engine anywhere. The only wire coming from this ignition module or coil goes to the safety switch over here on the engine which attaches to the cable on the handlebars that you let go to stop the machine. And as you can see there are no wires at all going underneath that flywheel. So it's a lot less headaches if you do not have points in my opinion. In this case if you had no spark you would check the safety switch over here or disconnect the wire from the coil, try it. If you still didn't have any spark, then you would know for sure that the ignition module needs to be replaced. Now my next question a YouTuber is asking me, what kind of starter rope do you use for small engines? Well, this is pretty well my collection of starter rope. I try to buy the premium or commercial braid type starter rope because it will last longer. And here's a close-up of some of the rope I use. For example, this roll here, which is Oregon, it says 16 carrier outer braid on it, so it's pretty strong. Just look to buy commercial or premium type starter rope if you're going to buy a whole roll. And if you're wondering what sizes to use, well this size here is 3.5. You would use this in like weed eaters and grass trimmers. The number 4 I would use in chainsaws mostly. Number 4.5 or 4.5 is pretty well what I use in lawnmowers 99% of the time. You can use number 5 in snowblowers and number 5.5 in snowblowers. In some other snowblowers you can use the number six or number seven for snowmobiles. And here I've got a number eight, it's really big. I hardly use this one at all. This would be good for bigger engines or some snowmobiles. If you're gonna do a lot of repairs, you're better off to buy a whole roll because you can get a 100 feet or 200 feet roll and it's much cheaper than if you go and buy a couple feet at a time. And if you mostly repair lawnmowers, keep yourself a roll of the 4.5 because you're going to use that one a lot if you're repairing starters on lawnmowers. And my next question a YouTuber is asking me, what's the part number for the small O-rings that go on the emulsion tube inside of a Tecumseh lawnmower carburetor? Now what I'm talking about is the small tube here that comes out of here from the center of the carb. And this is the small emulsion tube which goes in the center there. And there is an O-ring on this side here of the tube that clips right down in here. 
and on the other side another o-ring clips in here so the part number for that is 632547 they cost about a buck or two each but they're handy to have around you can get these when you buy a whole carburetor repair kit for these carburetors but I usually buy the o-ring separately because sometimes that's all I need to replace are the two o-rings that way there I don't need to buy a whole carburetor kit just to get one or two little o-rings and the o-rings I showed you are a different size than the ones that go at the end of the adjusting screws on some other Tecumseh carburetors in my next question a youtuber is asking me why does my weed eater idle properly he says it will idle really slow and then die out show you a weed eater here and if your weed eater is slightly different it doesn't matter because the carburetor will be the same principle when it comes to adjusting the idle speed so basically all you do if you want your machine to idle faster is you turn this screw in clockwise now if your machine idles too fast and you want it to idle slower just basically turn it out until you're happy with the speed that it's idling at so it's really simple you just adjust this screw here to the desired idle speed that you're happy with before I end off today, if anybody needs a track for a Citation 4500 Skidoo, you can have this one for free. But it's pretty old, it's from a 1981 Skidoo Citation. So I'll be throwing this out to the scrap, so before it goes out, if anybody wants it, just contact me and come pick it up for free. And I'm also getting rid of this cab here for 25 bucks. It's got a few cracks and all that, but it's still not bad. If you have a Husqvarna 288 or 281 chainsaw and you have a lot of bar oil that leaks down by the clutch, what your problem could be is the small o-ring on the back side of it right here. And also you may want to replace the oil line because it contacts the pump over here when it's screwed on to the crankcase. So if that o-ring's shot and the oil line here is pretty worn over here and doesn't contact the pump too tight, you will get some oil that will leak out of the pump even when the chainsaw is not running. So just keep that in mind if ever you have an oil leak on your 281 or 288 Husqvarna chainsaw. So again I want to thank everybody for watching. I want to thank all my new subscribers and all those who regularly watch my videos and comment. Have a great weekend and we'll see you next Friday.